I can see the indecision. Uh, Byram, New Jersey. Um, the foothills of Alamuchi Mountain. <laughs> um, oh no, you know what? Cranberry Lake is in... Um, home of the Cranberry Lake Suspension Bridge. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, Before it falls down, cool. I don't think it's in any danger of falling down. I think people are just in danger of falling through it. <laughs> Close enough. I think the towers and the cables are fine. But like the actual uh, span. Yeah. I stood up and... So yeah, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be working sort of like this once I start working, um, and then going out across, you know. Oh yeah, you know what? It is gonna be the Cranberry Lake Suspension Bridge. I got a good segue. Oh, do you? Hello there, my friends. Uh, my name is Carl Zipper. I run the Backwoods Engineering Programs here at Mount Alamuchi Scout Reservation. Um, Mount Alamuchi is in Byram, New Jersey, which is also home of the Cranberry Lake Suspension Bridge. Um, the bridge is closed right now, you know, because the floor is about to collapse on the darn thing. And that is relevant because today we are going to be talking about the floor lashing, which is um, a very useful thing, you know, if you ever start doing any sort of serious work with knots and lashings and building pioneering projects. Um, I use the floor lashing pretty regularly. Uh, mostly I use it when I'm building a tower to put the floor on the top. You know, or if I'm building a raft, um, the way I build rafts, you know, is with blue drums and a framework, and that framework needs a floor on it or else you're going to fall in the water. And the floor lashing is the right way to do them both. Um, back when I was young and I didn't know anything, you know, I used to put my floor on my project by doing a bunch of square lashings. Every floorboard would get square lashed down onto the, um, onto the structure. And that took, you know, the better part of forever. And um, it was a lot more work than it needed to be. There's a special lashing you can use um, to tie on your floors. It's called the floor lashing, and it's what we're going to work on today. Um, there are two different ways that you can tie the floor lashing. Um, one is the way that I did it for years. Um, it's the way that's shown in the Scout Handbook. And it works pretty well. Um, there's a second way, which I learned more recently. It was introduced to me by a gentleman named Larry Green um, from North Carolina. And his way is, um, I believe, a lot better. Um, I'm going to show you both ways, though, because the way in the Scout Handbook is um, a little bit easier to wrap your head around. So, regardless of which way we're going to tie our floor lashing, um, the way that we start out is we make a clove hitch around the spar that's the stringer. Um, that is to say, the spar that all the floorboards rest on. In this case, it's right here. So I'm going to make that clove hitch. I wrap the rope around the spar so that I have an X on the top. I keep wrapping around and I tuck the end of my rope right underneath the middle of that X. Um, I always make sure that I give myself, you know, a tail three or four inches long on that clove hitch because if it's much shorter than that, I can start running into trouble, um, you know, with the knot coming undone later on. Now, if you're familiar with the square lashing and um, if, you're, if you're at the point in your life where you're learning the floor lashing, you probably are. Um, you know, the first way of tying the floor lashing, you'll see a lot of similarities. Um, to tie the floor lashing, you take your rope, you come up over your first floorboard, then down underneath the stringer. So for here, you know, it's, it's just like the square lashing up to this point. Now here's the part where it diverges. Um, instead of coming back across your first floorboard again, like you would if you were tying a square lashing, now you wrap over the next floorboard, down under the stringer, over the next floorboard, down under the stringer, and over your last floorboard. Um, you know, when I build a tower especially, um, you know, you don't want to make the floor too big because that'll, that'll encourage too many people to go up there, you know, and then you might be dealing with, um, instead of a tower, you know, a pile of rubble on the ground. So, 
you know, this is about the size floor I would build for a tower, obviously for a raft or, you know, for some sort of bridge that requires the floor lashing, you know, you could keep going quite a bit further. Um, so, did my clove hitch, I did my wrappings, now all I have to do to finish this up is I have to tie off with another clove hitch around the stringer here. Um, if you've seen me do any lashings before, you know that I like to tie the clove hitch at the end of my lashings a little bit different than I tied it at the beginning. And that's because I can get it much closer in to my wrapping turns and get a, um, a much better result that'll hold up better over time and stay tight better over time. To make the clove hitch at the end, what I do is I make a half hitch around the stringer. To make that half hitch, I wrap around down underneath the stringer. And then when I come up, I pass the rope in between sort of the rope itself and the stringer. And that's my half hitch. It's too far away right now, but if I pull it, pull on the rope, and sort of work it down here, pull it in, wrench it back and forth, I get a half hitch that's right up against my wrapping turns. Um, now that's only a half hitch though. To make it a full clove hitch, I've got to do the same thing again. Make another half hitch around the stringer. Again, it can be far away. It doesn't matter because when I pull it tight, to get it as tight as it can be, it has to wind up as close as it can be, too. And there we go. That's the floor lashing. Um, if I wasn't going to take this apart right now to show you the way I prefer to do it, um, I would also wrap up this extra. But as I said, I'm taking it apart, so we're not going to do that. All right, so like I said, you know, I, um, I'm, I'm a little bit down on the, the way I just showed you tying the floor lashing because I, I like to have more rope in contact with each floorboard um, to make the whole thing a little bit stronger and a little bit more durable when it's in use. Um, Larry Green's method of tying the floor lashing is a lot better for that. I'll show you how to tie it now. Um, first step is exactly the same, which is we tie a clove hitch around our spar. Um, again, we're gonna leave a nice four to six inch long tail on that clove hitch you know, so that it doesn't slip out. Now, it immediately gets different though, um, because instead of working with the end of our rope and pulling the end through everywhere and having to deal with all that extra, we're gonna work with bites of the rope, um, starting right up against our clove hitch here. A bite is just where you take your, your long piece of rope and you fold in the middle somewhere, you fold it in half. So you've got two lengths of rope running parallel to each other with a little eye at the top. And um, that bite is what we're gonna work with to tie the floor lashing, um, this method. So we take that bite, you know, we make it 16 inches long or so. And we take that whole bite, we fold it over our floorboard, pass it down, bring it underneath the stringer and out towards the end of the floorboard here. Then we pass the floorboard right through the eye of that bite. And we take our rope, we pull straight down to get it nice and tight. There. And we come back up here to the top. Now we form another bite, again, you know, 16 inches long or so, and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna bring it over the next floorboard, down underneath the stringer, out to the front, and past the eye of that bite, over the, um, over the floorboard, over the end of the floorboard. And I mean, I'm sounding like a broken record, but same thing again. 16 inch bite, over the floorboard, down underneath the stringer, past the end of the floorboard, through the eye of the bite, and haul the thing tight. One more floorboard here to do. Pass the bite over underneath the stringer, past the end of the floorboard, through the eye of the bite, and tighten it up. Now there is one thing, you know, about this lashing, this way of tying the floor lashing, that is a little bit inferior to the first way I showed you, which is it uses twice as much rope. Um, you know, for a relatively small floor like this, that's not a big deal. You know, a 15 foot rope like I've been using here, there's plenty to put a floor, you know, on a, a proper size floor on a tower. You know, if you're building a really big floor like on a raft, you know, you're gonna need a long length of rope to do this with. You know, a 30 foot or, or longer potentially. Um, 
you don't have any single ropes that are long enough, you know, you can start with a short rope and when you start running out, just not another length onto the end um, and keep going. You know, it's, it's a thing to keep in mind, but it's, it's not a reason not to do this. Um, so, I did my clove hitch at the beginning. I did my uh, wrappings, and you can see I have the rope. It passes over each floorboard in two places. Now all I have to do is finish off the lashing. Um, I'm going to do that by making a clove hitch. And just like before, you know, the way I like to do that clove hitch at the end is by making half hitches. So, I'm going to make my first half hitch over the stringer, wrap around down under it, and come up in between the stringer and the rope. Pull it tight, work it down in close. I can't get it quite as close as I'd like here because of this nub on the spar. Oh well, maybe I can. Yeah, look at that, I can. And now do the same thing again, make another half hitch. Pull it tight, get it in close, and now I'm gonna wrap up my extra. Now one thing here, you know, is as you've seen me doing this, is I'm using planks um, for my floors. I like using the planks, um, they're a lot lighter. You know, they, um, they look a lot better and they're a lot easier to get your footing on too, which is particularly important if you're up high in the air. Um, I got these planks, you know, I just cut up some old forklift pallets. Um, if you're gonna do that, you know, try and find ones made out of a hardwood instead of out of pine. Um, but you know, if you, if you can't do that or you want something that looks a little more rustic or whatever, you know, there's no reason you can't use spars, you know, short lengths, of, short lengths of a round spar to do the same thing. Um, it's just understand, you know, that your project's going to be heavier. Um, and, you know, you're also going to need more spars, you know, to fill a given space um, than you will the planks. So, that's two ways to tie the floor lashing. Um, I like this second way the best, but I showed them both to you just for the sake of completeness. And... Um, I hope you've learned a thing or two, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you very much. Pass the, the loop of that bite, or the, the eye of that bite, or whatever you want to call it, overneath, or <laughs> overneath. <laughs> you know, over the end of, um, of our floorboard. <laughs> you know, cinch it up tight. It's okay to put your weight into it. Now, you know, just keep going. Another bite. Over the floorboard. Down underneath the stringer. Get this camera out of the way. Sorry, Rich. <laughs> do we want to start this one over? I think we do. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, because I almost just tangled it up around that camera too. <laughs> You're a mess. Yeah. <laughs> Gonna have some fun editing this one together. Well, this will let me get rid of the um, overneath. The overneath? <laughs> yeah. I liked it. I would get a laugh out of it if someone else was saying it. If it uh, was somebody else's mistake, it would be okay. Yeah. You know, I, I've got um. I've got my reputation to uphold here, Rich. That's how it fit. As one of the world's three foremost, you know, um, <laughs> backwards engineers. <laughs>